What's up, everybody? I'm the Mangoose. You are awesome, and today we're talking some Overprime. Cherry Tipper let me know in the comments of the August update video that Soul Leave will be streaming the updated version of the game on August 28th. That'll, uh, that'll be tomorrow if you're watching this the day it came out. And that'll be at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, that's 7 p.m. Eastern, and 11 p.m. GMT. The game will be devs against mods and will be streamed by Sarah Jog. I'll put a link to their Twitch in the video description below if you guys want to check that out. What I'm doing today, though, is taking a look at the last update video they released to point out a few things that I noticed. I don't normally do these video breakdowns because there usually isn't enough information in them for any kind of content that isn't just wild speculation, but there really is some interesting shit going on in the Overprime one. I also don't really cover Overprime nearly as much as Fault or Predecessor, mainly because I'm kind of lazy and can't really be bothered until I see a coming to Steam announcement. I do keep an eye on it though as they do have by far the biggest hero roster, multiple maps to play on, and multiple game modes. The one lane 3v3 mode they had was a ton of fun. The map featured in this video however is not one that I've seen from them. There also seems to be some new abilities and mechanics for Kalari that I'll point out. I'm not a Kalari main by any means though so please let me know what you think of her in the comments below. Also I'll have a link to the original video in the description so you can watch this at full 4k resolution if you want. Now let's get to it. We start off with this bush that Kalari and Severog are both hiding in. It looks like entering the bush puts you in the shadow plane and makes you invisible, much like bushes do in most isometric MOBAs. The bu this bush in particular reminds me of the bushes in the game Hood, where you're somehow able to hide your entire body in ankle-length flowers. These at least extend over Kalari's head, so this one makes a little more sense. Uh, the bush is situated on the outer edge of one of the side lanes. I think it seems like there's more bushes around these side lanes. Not sure if there's any in mid lane or anything. And But speaking of mid lane, there's my girl the Fae holding it down. Now we get a lock on targeting reticle that goes red when Murdoch is in range. The E ability is activated and Kalari leaps straight to him. Um, and she, she does some damage. There's no frames between the bush and the attack, which leads me to believe that this is like a shadow slip type maneuver, kind of like Countess's shadow slip, and maybe there possibly will be some iframes allowing you some uh, outplay mechanics. Might be pretty fun. We see the old faithful right-click dagger throw here. As Kalari is attacking, we see a notification for a back attack. From the looks of it, attacking a hero's back adds five damage at level one. Pretty cool mechanic that I think suits Kalari's roguishness quite well. And here's where shit gets real interesting. There's a teleporter that takes you from one side of the map to the other. It looks to be situated on the extreme ends of the river. And I'm not sure if this is like a one-way portal or if it obeys Pac-Man physics and you can just shift back and forth between the two sides of the map. Kinda neat, but I don't know how I feel about that much mobility. The map does seem pretty wide though, so maybe it's needed. And here we see the first activation of Kalari's ultimate. Instead of a long-range global ult, it's a very short-range series of slashes that appear to lock both Kalari and her target in place. An ultimate like this really cements Kalari as a duelist. Like, free damage in a 1v1 is awesome, but take it from a Richter player, locking yourself down during a teamfight is a recipe for disaster. Even if you're locking yourself and somebody else down and dealing damage to them, Kalari just being static in a teamfight, she's just going to get shit on. And finally, we get another look at the ultimate as well as seeing the Shadow Well in action. Each slash is dealing 57 damage and none of the slashes crit, so I'm guessing the ultimate allows you to deal several auto attacks at 40% damage that can't crit. I personally think that a global ultimate is just always better, but is it better for Kalari? I don't know. Like I said, I don't play her a lot, so let me know what you guys think. And that's it, guys. I mainly wanted to get the word out about the stream on the 28th, so you guys can check that out if you want. I hope you enjoyed today's video, but for now, this is the Mangoose signing off. You guys, have a good one. Mangoose!